Hello everybody, I'm Dan. In this tutorial I'm going to give you an introduction to CUDA kernels. Let's start off by opening up our web browser to my website, the gpu.com, and then we'll scroll down here to GPU Tutorials. Select Introduction to Kernels. Now, I reshot this tutorial because I wanted to add some clarification to some concepts that, um, that basically deserved a little more attention. So in this tutorial, I'll explain the basics of what the term kernel means with relation to CUDA parallel programming. Now simply put, kernels are just C functions that are executed in parallel on the GPU. We need to talk about two terms, host or device. You're going to hear, hear a lot about these in, uh, in CUDA parallel programming. So host, the term host basically is code that is executed on the CPU. Host variables reside in computer memory. Convention is to prefix host variable names with H underscore. Okay, and then device. Term device basically refers to code that is executed on the GPU. Device variables reside in GPU memory. Convention is to prefix device variable names with D underscore. <coughs> okay, let's talk next about execution space specifiers. So double underscore global double underscore basically prefixes a kernel. And the uh, and basically after after this global right the following function will run in parallel on the GPU which is the device okay the next execution space specifier is device well, you know enclosed in these double underscores here and that prefixes a GPU function and the following function will be executed on the GPU when I say following right like you have this right here and then this is the following function <coughs> okay. Now, uh, host execution space specifier uh, prefixes a CPU function, and the following function will be executed on the CPU. Now, a function without an explicit execution space specifier will default to a host function, all right, which is host. Now, since the subject of this tutorial is kernels, I will only be going over the global execution space specifier at this time, right? And here's a code example. You got the global um, execution space specifier, and then the function that follows after that is, is going to be a kernel, right? So it is important to note that a global kernel can only have a void return type, all right? So you might be going, oh, well, how do I get data back and forth from this thing? Well, exchange of data between the host and device and we're talking like functions at this point, right, is performed using special CUDA mem copy functions. Now, generally in the form of array data. Now, also, you should be aware that this uh, type of kernel may return execution to the calling function before all threads have completed their task. And I'll go over that here in the, when we run some code here in a minute here. Let's talk next about execution configuration. And don't worry if you're kind of lost at this point. You probably, you should be really. Uh, but uh, this will all make clarity make a lot more sense when we actually run some example code. So the execution configuration refers to the special set of parameters that are required to specify the number of threads to execute in parallel. So basically triple opening and triple closing chevrons are used to enclose the execution configuration parameters. There are a total of uh, four parameters. Now the last two are optional, so I will save them for a later tutorial and concentrate on the first two parameters in this tutorial. So the first parameter has to do with grids, which uh, requires a tutorial of its own, so we'll just default that value to one for now. Now the second parameter specifies the number of threads that we are going to execute the kernel on. Um, it is important to make a mental note for a future tutorial that I really that I'm really oversimplifying what the first two parameters really are. They are in fact dim three structs, which will be part of my next tutorial. Okay, so up here, going back up here, we've got this kernel here, and down here we have this host function, which is of course your standard um, program entry point here with the main main function. And since we don't have host don't have anything above it, it actually defaults to a host function. So it's your, your program entry point always starts off on the CPU there. And then to execute this kernel here, we just simply have the kernel name, right? And then here is the execution configuration sandwiched in between what normally, you know, would be our uh, parameters, our normal function parameters inside of these parentheses. So the execution configuration here, we're defaulting this to one, which has to do with uh, grids. 
and then we're specifying 32 threads, okay? Um, so in the statement above, the second parameter of 32 means that we're going to execute the kernel name kernel on 32 simultaneous threads. It's a good rule of thumb to use multiple of, multiples of 32 for the threads parameter. And I'll discuss that in a later tutorial. Now one of the coolest features of parallel threads is that they have internal identifiers that keep track of what the thread number they are. I'll briefly discuss one of those identifiers, which is thread IDX, in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and write some code. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna move this off screen here. <clears throat> and let's go over to start and let's scroll down to our Visual Studio 2015 and select our developer's command prompt here. Okay, cd backslash to go to the root. I'm gonna make a MD for make a directory CUDA. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. And we're going to make a directory here, and I'm just going to call this uh, kernel intro. Change directories to that, and I'm going to use uh, notepad++ kernel intro.cu CUDA for the CUDA extension. <coughs> okay. All right, let's bring the site back over here, and we're just going to copy and paste this here. You don't want to see me type all that stuff out. Let's go. All right, so um, basic program here. No need to go over that, but here is our kernel right here. I've named this thing output from GPU, and basically what I'm doing here in this first statement here, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm assigning um, an int i, right, and setting that equal to thread idx.x. Now the thread idx is basically uh, what's called a dim three struct. It has three values there, X, Y, and Z, and I'll go over that in the next tutorial. But this will basically be the ID number of our thread, which is zero to, oh, this should actually be 31, right? Um, and in this example. And then I'm just displaying to the console, hello world from the GPU, I am thread number, right? And then whatever the thread number is there. So in the, uh, the, main, the main function here, our entry point here, here is where I am executing it, right? Um, one block, 32 threads. Uh, basically one block, but anyway, we'll go over that in the future tutorial. We're just basically concerned with this 32 threads here. Okay, um, let's go ahead and, and just run this here. <clears throat> Put our screen, MVCC. Forgot the output parameters here. We'll just do about bear minus O, and I want to call this um, kernel intro, right? There we go. And let's go ahead and execute kernel intro. And there we go. So we get hello world from the GPU. I'm thread number zero all the way down to 31. So that's what the thread IDX does here. And this, of course, the second parameter here says we're going to execute 32. Um, basically kernels here, right? Okay, um, one of the things that I did mention here in the tutorial a little further up here is that this, this statement, this paragraph, this sentence right here. So, also you should be aware this type of kernel may return execution of the calling function before all threads have completed their tasks. So let me demonstrate what that is, and this is a really important to know here. So, um, in the main function here, I'm just going to come down here and save that. I'm just going to display uh, hello from the CPU. You'll notice that that is executed after this particular statement there. So let's clear our screen. Recompile. And let's run it. Okay, now we would have expected to see it down here, but in fact, it's up here. So, um, this particular statement executed before this was even finished there. So that's what I'm talking about. So we got an asynchronous execution on this kernel here, basically. It, uh, it'll move on after it started it up there. So how do we fix that? And, and that, you can probably imagine that can become quite an issue, you know, if you're, if you're doing a bunch of calls, one after another after another to various different kernels there. So um, we have this, this function here called CUDA device synchronized, and what that will what that'll do is that will ensure that this kernel has 
all the threads in it are done before it moves on in this host function here, okay? So let's go ahead and save that. Let's clear our screen, recompile, and then we'll rerun. Okay, so you can see now we've got everything ex as expected there, and there's our hello from the CPU in the order that we wanted it, that we actually wanted it to display. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this, minimize this, and just uh, leave you guys with some final thoughts here. So basically now you should have a good idea of what a kernel is, where it is executed, and how to specify the execution configuration. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.